Hi, this is Peter. Hi, this is Sandra. And we are Medievalist.net. And today we're doing the season finale of... Game of Thrones. I think next season I'm just going to cave and buy him like a megaphone and he can announce it that way. It'd be creepy scary. Anyhow, uh, so we have the season finale, or as I would like to call it, the unseason finale. I kind of was like, eh, what did you think? I'll, I'll say the season finale that would try to be a mid-season filler episode. I don't know if I'd call it filler, but I kind of feel like the Battle of King's Landing felt like a season finale, and this episode felt like the episode that should have been come before it. You know what I mean? How about you? Uh, you know, I, it, it reminded me a lot of how season one ended, where Ned gets killed on at the second last episode, and then the, the, we have another episode after that, which kind of uh, takes it. Uh, again, they talk about all the characters, and then we have a, a kind of, at just the end, a real surprising thing that happens at the end. But it was like a kind of a normal episode that just has a twist at the end. Um, yeah, and I also kind of felt, you know, I know they're trying to wrap everything up, so they're, they basically had a laundry list of every single character that possibly exists on the show, we're going to show you a snippet of whatever happened to Varys, Daenerys, da da da, and even like Sam, and just, you know, Littlefinger, and it was just, you know, it was too much, I, I found... You know, because usually they focus on, like, a few characters, leave the other ones for another day, and then come back to them. This time, they tried to check off every box and make sure, have we covered everybody? And it just kind of came off as messy. And, and sort of things came to a rush. Like, I got the feeling that da da Daenerys, the whole uh, story arc with her, that in, if that was the book, they must have, like, like, in the book that may have gone on for pages and pages, but her story was, like just over with in like you know a couple of minutes it seemed like to me yeah here's some magic here's the dream sequence here's your dragons thank you come they, again they uh and uh it was kind of predictable on what was going to happen there oh the dragons oh the dragons gonna save her oh yes they do you know so and um and then it was kind of like uh you know like this you know these almost very you know, like i was disappointed with that way with that how that kind of wrapped up so. Yeah, and you know, not just that. Also, um, I just uh, the two really interesting things sort of um, were very quickly brushed over. I mean, John had sort of a very non-interesting. Okay, oh, you're coming to meet Mance Raider. Look at our village down from this cliff. You're. Mm -hmm. It just. It was almost like a throwaway for me. Yeah, I, st I still don't know why he's fighting uh, the guy, uh, like killing his uh, partner. Uh, don't you remember? Just it was they were like they were saying to like you know gain uh, some sort of you know favor with Man's Raider and the, uh, the the people of the north. They, uh, but it didn't seem like we didn't have to kill each other to do it. I don't know. I think he knew that they were going to kill him, and at least he wasn't going to die in vain. He was going to go out and make John give John the best fighting chance he could give him. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the two most compelling scenes, um, Buffy agrees. Thank you, Buffy. Um, for me, we're so skimmed over. Sansa's scene where Joff sets her aside and, and releases uh, her of her vow, and the other scene with Sam and the uh, the others, the, the zombies, mm -hmm. I found was completely blown over. It's like Sam, it was this great reveal. Sam's freaking out by the rock. But it was it could have gone on longer, I felt, you know? And it, it just didn't. And I, I just was disappointed. And the whole thing with Sansa was, okay, we're going to cast you aside. And Littlefinger's going to say some things that you're lucky you got off that way. Okay, have a nice life. Next scene. Uh, yeah, Those like, the big uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, it, it, it was Sansa that just kind of seemed, uh, that was, just, you know, a scene that they had to do, right? Mm -hmm. to just advance the plot and, uh, and, oh, you know, with these, the, these others, and they, they kind of look good. It's like, that's the Walking Dead moment. And I'm, we're big fans of the show Walking Dead, so, 
you know, I was gonna, I got yeah. hype for that. Like but, a frozen Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, but and they kind of, to me, they're, they're kind of like zombies, but looks like they got some leadership. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, I I enjoyed like I kind of enjoyed that, and it's something to kind of throw, but it, it seems like uh, that that doesn't is not enough for a season finale for me. No, and uh, it just it just felt too too thrown together, too many things going on. Mm -hmm. I know that they had to wrap up the loose ends, but I just. I just think it was a very unseasoned finale, except for the fact that they ended on Sam encountering the others and being like, whoa, you know, that that was a great way to end it off. But, I mean, some of the other things were forgettable, like the scene, I'm sure it's going to be important down the road of, with Varys in Littlefinger's brothel, you know, Arya's scene with Jack in, here's the coin, that was, I'm sure that's definitely important. But, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I just... It wasn't one of my favorite episodes, and I always, I have a standard that for a season finale, I should be tearing out my hair and losing sleep. And that's how I felt last week, and this week I just kind of felt like that could have been any old episode the, during the season. Uh, you know, like, things were, there's a sense of stuff that was anticlimactic, climactic, like, especially Theon. The Theon's, uh, he's getting, he gives this great speech, and it looks like they're going to do something. And and they just knock him out, and they I guess they drag him away, and they apparently they set fire to Winterfell and escape. Although you know, isn't there an army besieging them? But that, you know apparently yeah they could get out pretty quick easily. So um, it's kind of funny. He was like yeah, Braveheart, yeah. and then he was like blah 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 blah, and then they were like conk. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like I couldn't wait till he shut up. <laughs> you know, and that was a funny scene. Actually. It, it, you know, it, it'd be a funny scene, but they, it was all leading up to that it was very serious, and uh, like Theon kind of uh, his kind of talks that he's having before, and he, I, I felt like it was running up to something big, and uh, it just kind of felt flat for me. So, yeah, I, I would agree. Um, also, you know, I think um, the scene with Brienne and Jamie coming across the women who had been hanged, and then Rob's marriage, and uh, telling Kat off basically that I can make my own decisions. Sorry, she's scratching. Um, it's just, um, they were kind of very quickly brushed by, and I almost, in talking about it now, like I had to refresh my memory and go, oh yeah, there was that scene with. Jamie and Brienne. Oh yeah, there was that scene with Rob that was all of ten seconds long, and you're just straining yeah. to remember what happened, and it just becomes this big jumble of yeah, like this, the scene, mush. the scene with Jamie and Brienne, like that didn't need to be. No, you know that was just that's just you know kind of a scene that I would I expected in a you know a regular episode like this this was the you know episode six or seven. Uh, yeah, I could see that there. I didn't. I felt that was, all, you know, it did really nothing for me, you know, except show how tough Brienne is. But, and then, yeah, uh, the the marriage uh, happens just like that because they ran out of time, so. And then, the, 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 what the we didn't discuss one last thing, is that there, the one important scene was Tyrion. I thought Tyrion's scene was important because he kind of wakes up and mm -hmm. it's like, you're no longer the hand, and your father is the hand, Bronn's been stripped of his gold cloak status. Mm -hmm. All your hillmen have been bought off and sent away. Yeah. You know, this is a kind of a big red flag, like, nobody likes you. His, you know, mistress Shay's like, run away to Pentos with me. And Tyrion's like, no, I like the intrigue and the drama. I think I'm going to stay. What did you make of his answer? Uh, look, I, I kind of expect, I, I think he, I think he really likes the game that you know the game of thrones so and he and he, he sees himself as someone that can be very useful um uh still so i don't think like I, i'm not surprised that he wants to stay like you know he's been in worse situations so and um and like you know i'm kind of surprised like he, does he really think he's he's been thrown to the like dogs as you know as they say like you know he did save King's Landing for, you know, pretty much. But Varys made a good point. Um, nobody's going to remember. Like, people will remember, but you're not going to be the one that has songs sung and mm -hmm. accolades 
yeah. tossed his way. Um, but we all yeah. remember what you did, yeah. but just telling you how it really is. Yeah, let, let, He's going to be an unsung hero, basically. Uh, so I, that to me, that cue, along with everything else that happened, uh -huh. as much as he enjoys playing the game, it's very dangerous. The, yeah. the smart thing to do would be to take Shay's advice and kind of get out. Well, hopefully not. So, because he's he's good where he is, and I, and honestly, thing. like I want to see him and in, in Tywin interact. Like we're gonna actually kind of see him again. I wonder what Tywin's reaction is. Like apparently, it sounds like you know he's being thrown off. You know, I said kick to the dog, kick to the curb, uh, and I'm kind of surprised at that. Like uh, you know, I thought felt that Tywin kind of thought a little higher of him than especially, but I guess that's all gonna be determined in season three. So. Yes, so sadly we were leaving you for a hiatus until Game of Thrones returns for Season 3, but thank you so much to everyone for joining us uh, with for our reviews and mm -hmm. reading our recaps, mm -hmm. and please, please join us for an exciting season of Season 3. Of Game of Thrones. I really gotta get you a mask. Here's my throne. Thanks.